Numerous trees were blown over. This one in Clapham saw Bedford Road closed and trees weren't the only things causing disruption. This crane here on Creek Street in Greenwich felt the full force of the winds as it was bent over double during the middle of the night. The London Fire Brigade and the police came to shore up the surrounding area. But the building, you can see it dangling precariously above, eight residents there from the Lord Hood pub were evacuated. The wind and the noise was horrendous and I spent most of the night sort of up wondering if anything dreadful was going to sort of fall off the roof. The school in Plasto is in the heart of one of the most ethnically diverse areas in the UK. Over 60% of pupils are eligible for free school meals, more than 60 different languages are spoken and some of the pupils come from conflict areas. Yet with the help of charities, students and teachers are overcoming those challenges. The Queen's Trust funds a number of youth charities, the Duke of Edinburgh Award, the National Youth Orchestra and Teach First to name but a few. They work in partnership with Lister Community School to help support the pupils here in Newham. I don't think that we could have made the progress that we've made as a school over the last few years without the support of these organisations. The Queen's Trust has made a huge difference to the school. But last year John found an opportunity at Transport for London. They offer paid work placements specifically for wounded veterans. I got in touch with the Community Transition Partnership and um, they got me in touch with TfL. And TfL brought me in for an interview and managed to get a placement which I'm very grateful for. TfL started this work placement programme in 2012 with just four wounded ex-servicemen. The programme has grown and since then 28 veterans have completed the scheme with all but one securing jobs within the transport industry. The photo features a couple who live in Maida Vale. Anita and Human are getting married in Iran in May but they chose London for their engagement photo shoot. I love the architecture of London. It's absolutely amazing. So, um, and it's it was a great pleasure to see all these monuments and architecture in London. Almost a hundred thousand Chinese tourists visit London every year, and with its abundance of landmarks and a skyline like this, it's not hard to see why so many return for their wedding snaps. Yet with this type of photography becoming ever more popular across Asia and the Middle East, it's the London economy that's truly getting its happily ever after. And the great thing about it is it's helping the UK economy because they're flying in to do these shoots, specifically in London. A frightening experience, but for sportswoman Betty, her reaction was instinct. I love sports and I love a challenge. And she was a challenge. <laughs> so she wasn't going to have it. So, um, you know... You, you, I'm, I'm strong-minded, strong-willed, uh, and that's what keeps you going. And I wasn't going to sit back and let anyone get one over me, I'm afraid. Betty was travelling down this walkway in Pitsy when she was attacked on Monday. Fortunately, two passers-by came to her aid, chasing off her attacker, who dropped her bag in a panic. Basildon CID are appealing for information about the assailant. She's described as in her 20s and was wearing an olive green jacket with a fur-lined hood and burgundy tracksuit bottoms. Security may have been on the minds of many today, a large-scale performance attracting a huge crowd in a central London landmark. But while there was a visible police presence, it certainly wasn't overwhelming. And with the weather putting on a performance of its own, it certainly proved a popular day out for many families. The show receiving rave reviews from its open air audience. It was really, really amazing. I mean, they did very, very well. It was almost flawless. It was really intense. I cried a little bit. <laughs> Helen Mulroy, BBC London News.